U.S. wireless carriers are aggressively expanding their 5G networks, but there are still no studies about how safe the technology really is. KPIX5 anchor Len Key shows us the issue has divided communities across the Bay Area. Here in Palo Alto, some residents fought long and hard to slow the spread of wireless antennas in their neighborhoods. The city finally released a new wireless ordinance that steers 5G cell towers away from residential areas and bans them within 600 feet of schools. For everyone else, it's 20 feet, including homes for seniors. I think it's outrageous the way they've behaved. Chris Robel first noticed it last spring, a small 5G cell tower right next to Channing House, the retirement home where his parents live. Chris started asking questions about it. He says an employee with AT&T, which owns the 5G installation, told him. If you're worried about this, this small cell node, you ought to be a lot more worried about the macro cell tower on the roof at Channing House. Turns out Channing House, home to some of the most prominent retirees in Palo Alto, is also home to a 4G macro wireless cell tower on the roof installed back in 2006. My parents and other residents had never had this disclosed to them ever. According to the American Cancer Society, there is no strong evidence that radio frequency waves from cell towers cause any noticeable health effects. But it says more research is needed, especially for any possible long-term effects. I think it's the unknown. We we don't we don't have definitive answers. Responding to residents' concerns, Channing House hired a consultant last year to test EMF emissions from the rooftop tower here. Those results came back way lower than the exposure limits deemed safe by the Federal Communications Commission. But critics say those limits set by the FCC in 1996 are outdated. It's just a giant experiment on the entire uh, population. Joel Moskowitz with the UC Berkeley School of Public Health says hundreds of peer-reviewed studies from 41 countries have found exposure to radio frequency emissions from macro towers like the one on top of Channing House can have serious health impacts. Headaches, what people describe as brain fog, memory and confusion, skin conditions, heart palpitations, a whole range of symptoms has been um, associated with its long-term exposure to prior forms of cell phone radiation. As for the new 5G towers, there have been no studies at all to date on potential health impacts. 5G is different from older RF technologies because it uses both slower microwaves and faster millimeter waves that transmit it up to billions of cycles per second. Thousands of scientists and doctors have signed appeals calling on governments to, at least to establish a moratorium until we can understand what the, uh, the hazards are. But David Witkowski with the Wireless Communications Initiative says people's fear of exposure to electromagnetic radiation from cell towers is unfounded. If you would expect that there were health effects, you would expect them to be showing up in the population by now after 25 years, and they're not. He says while hundreds of studies have found health impacts, hundreds of others refute them. Besides, he points out cities cannot consider health when permitting wireless equipment. The FCC has said, you know, the guidance on health is a federal matter, and as long as you remain within the guidelines that are set forth by the FCC, um, then you cannot deny a permit or an application for a site based simply upon the fact that a group of citizens um, believes that it's unsafe. Not only that, the FCC requires cities to grant permits for cell sites faster to help speed up the 5G rollout. Wireless communications is an extremely critical part of 21st century life. Channing House turned down our request for an interview, but in an email, CEO Rhonda Beckdahl told us I would be surprised if residents were not notified in 2006, given the transparent culture at Channing House. The antennas have not been a secret. As for the new 5G small cell tower outside the building, Channing House was not consulted about it. Beckdahl told us Channing House makes about $36,000 a year from leasing its roof to T-Mobile. Mary Robel organized some other residents and led a petition to Channing House's board to terminate the contract. I, I think it's a, it's a risk, and I don't I don't know why we need to take that risk for thirty six thousand dollars a year. But Beckdahl told us there's no way out. She's locked in for another twelve years, and only T-Mobile can break the contract. You can relocate this equipment somewhere else that's not where seniors live twenty four seven. Right, that is the issue. 
and they deserve that respect, and they certainly deserve to know about it. And as we mentioned, Palo Alto's wireless ordinance does have a residential zone of exclusion, but exceptions can be made to allow some wireless communication facilities just 20 feet from homes. There's also an exception for that 600-foot setback for schools. That can go down to 300. In Palo Alto, Lynn Keese, KPIX 5.